I started seeing posts on the R Nintendo Switch subreddit saying that some people were having problems with this dock. I did not heed those warnings. But uh, the switch here seems to have died from a third party dock, specifically the Nyko dock. But at some point, that USB C connection down there that speaks to uh, the dock and communicates to your TV so you can play on your TV stopped working. It's been a long time since the version 5.0 Switch update that bricked a lot of Switch units using third party docks and chargers. Since then, Nobody's really talked about it, but companies are still selling third-party docks and chargers. Nintendo even partnered with a third-party battery manufacturer. So what's the deal? Is it safe to use third-party devices to power the Switch? And what makes these companies so sure that they're safe? This rabbit hole goes real deep. A lot of research and a little bit of correspondence with some of these companies. There's a lot of technical nonsense to pour through, but I promise that it's worth getting all of that out of the way to drive the main point home at the end. It's a wild ride. We already know from last year that Nintendo doesn't use a regular old USB protocol for their docks. They use MyDP to output video. This means that you can't just get any old USB-C to HDMI adapter. You have to get one specifically made with this in mind. The other problem is that the switch needs to be powered in order to output video through the dock's HDMI port. The reason for this is because the switch ramps up CPU usage when it's displaying to your TV. That's how Mario Kart is capable of doing 1080p 60 frames per second. This causes the switch to draw a lot more power. For power consumption, the Switch doesn't abide by any standard protocols either. USB-C is a standardized port that's capable of a lot. USB Power Delivery, or USB PD, is the standard protocol that allows USB-C devices to tell chargers and accessories what type of power needs to be delivered. It's a sort of code to abide by, or language that's supposed to be universally understood by all USB-C devices. It's part of the perks of having such a universal port. Google themselves strongly recommends to Android phone manufacturers to not support proprietary charging methods that modify VBus voltage beyond default levels. This was in response to things like Qualcomm's proprietary quick charging method, which they ended up fixing in its fourth version to work alongside USB power delivery standards. The Switch is like a beefy Android tablet, and it does not support this USB PD standard. In fact, it straight up breaks this protocol by asking for 0.5 amps and then drawing 1.5 amps. That's 300% more power than it asked for. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that this is a very dangerous behavior and could potentially fry your Switch. It seems as though the only charger that speaks the same language as the Switch is the Nintendo charger that came with your Switch. And apparently, this new Anchor power core made specifically for the Switch. Note that the Switch is being charged from the USB-C port and not the IQ port. This design is slightly different than anything else that Anchor had before. I was expecting it to be a regular power core with the Switch logo slapped on there. They do have another 13,400 milliamp hour power core that is very similar but this one is apparently optimized for flawless compatibility with the Nintendo Switch. It's unclear how or why that is. All the way at the bottom of the page, it says, note, ensure that you have installed the latest system update for the Nintendo Switch before using this portable charger. Maybe there's something in the Switch update that whitelists this specific anchor charger? But how can they be so sure that a user doesn't mistakenly plug their switch into that IQ port? And if that IQ port is safe, why aren't the IQ ports on all the other Anchor chargers safe? Then again, I've never really heard of these batteries with IQ or iSmart ports being a problem. I've used Anchor and RAV power chargers in the past and they've worked just fine. The bricking problem seems to be most related to having the switch plugged into a dock. And if you have one of these power banks plugged into a dock, then you are a psychopath. You should only be using these portable batteries in portable mode. That should go without saying. 
Things get way more complicated when you add the dock into the equation. The dock doesn't abide by any standard protocol either. So on both ends of the dock, from the charger to the dock and from the dock to the switch, there's a whole lot of magic going on that nobody seems to be able to decode. Nathan K has a great write-up on Google+. He's the closest anybody's gotten to figuring this all out. When docking the Switch, the Switch just launches into something called Nintendo Alt Mode, regardless of whether or not the dock or charger supports this. I'll also note that it could take up to two minutes for the Switch to discharge its V-Bus. This means do not unplug your Switch from the dock and plug it directly into another docker charger, especially a third-party docker charger within that two minutes, because this will almost certainly fry your Switch. To complicate things even more, a docked switch could rapidly ask for different power outputs to accommodate its rapidly changing clock speeds. And how exactly is a third-party dock supposed to understand what the switch is even asking for? Even when a third-party dock or charger works, it's working despite the laundry list of errors that are happening behind the scenes. It's kind of like an incredibly fortunate idiot from a cartoon, where it does everything dangerously wrong, but it all somehow just works out fine in the end. Some of these errors even happen with the official Nintendo dock, complicating things even further. But of course, the official Nintendo dock still produces the least amount of errors out of all of them. So it's still your safest bet. When the Switch finally bricks itself on a third-party dock or charger, it's because the wrong ampage that is being provided has fried the chip that is asking for that wrong ampage. It refuses to turn on because without this chip, it has no idea what type of power it needs or what to do with it. Not like it was doing a good job of regulating that in the first place. So the conclusion that I was able to draw from all of that technical garbage is that Nintendo definitely wants you to use their first party docks and chargers and they've rendered all third-party docks and charges unsafe in the process. So why are companies still producing third-party docks and chargers? I asked Skull & Co directly because they sent me a dock after the 5.0 Switch update happened. Against my better judgment, I've been using their dock in place of my official Nintendo one to kind of call their bluff and see if anything would happen, and so far nothing bad's happened. I actually like it a lot. It comes with its own charger, although the cable is very, very short. It pops up so it can be more compact when traveling. And if that's not small enough, you can even remove the guts of the dock to make it super compact. If disconnected from the HDMI, the dock just acts as a stand. My only gripe is that the switch kind of hangs loose on the dock. It's not sitting very securely. All of this is ignoring the big elephant in the room, which, of course, is the fact that there's no way that they can conform to Nintendo's proprietary standards. I straight up asked them what they thought about the 5.0 Switch update bricking systems, and they sent me back a very informative response with a lot of technical jargon that seemed like they knew what they were talking about. But now I know what that technical jargon means, and you do too. So let's go through it together, shall we? Some say the Nintendo Switch and dock are chock full of USB-C protocol errors and flaws, but we have a different opinion. Mm, mm. The USB-C protocol, PD protocol, has to be amended in order to prevent the system being cracked and meet Nintendo's prospects in the future. Well, Nintendo's protocol definitely needs amending. They're right about that. As long as the protocols in the accessories are in accordance with the PD protocol standards, they should work perfectly with the Nintendo Switch. The Nyko dock had PD protocol errors. It drew too much power to the Switch and damaged the power management component. And this is exactly when I decided to take my Switch off the Skull & Co dock and never use it again. Using the standard PD protocol isn't enough because the Nintendo Switch doesn't use that protocol. And it shouldn't be a matter of opinion. It's entirely possible that the Nyko dock produced more protocol errors than other docks, resulting in the power IC chip failure. But just because it produces more protocol errors doesn't mean that other docks don't produce any at all. Other docks are still unsafe, and they won't be safe to use until they're able to decipher exactly what language the Switch is talking. This is something Nintendo's own dock has a problem doing sometimes. These third-party companies are more than happy to throw Nyko under the bus, but they're not the only ones out there bricking Switches. 
The fast snail dock is also popular for bricking switches, but that's just because it's a popular dock. The only other company that I spoke to was Chargen. My first impression of Chargen was an email that I got for them claiming that their dock could output 4K 60 frames per second, which would be impossible for the Switch to do. They backed off on this claim before they went to market though. But all that tells me is that this is just a generic USB-C hub repurposed as a dock for the Switch. And that's just not gonna fly here. I asked them about the 5.0 update and the bricking issues, and they had this to say. As you know, there are many speculations as to why the 5.0 update caused the bricking issues. There seems to be differing opinions by experts, again with the opinions, and different variations of the issues that came about with some of our competitors. Fortunately for us, we know for a fact that 98% of our users still have them and have not complained about our Switch Hub dock. We have ran in-house tests for the bricking issues and have yet to discover any defects or malfunctions. The nominal amount of customers who have raised concerns that were potentially relevant to this issue have gotten silent when we made concerted efforts to reach out to them. I thought that was very interesting that customers with the bricking issue went silent when Charger and Reach out to them. So naturally, I offered my help. I actually have a regular viewer who says that the Charge End hub caused his switch to malfunction. I've looped him in on this email. We call him Grimhane. Maybe together we can get to the bottom of this. That was Thursday night. It is now Monday. So, uh, who's silent here? Another interesting note from their original email. The very few blog sites that we found in an effort to seek out any reviews of our product experiencing this issue were all either baseless or defamatory. Unfortunately, it seems that the concern caused by Nyko has given all third-party suppliers a bad name, even the reputable ones. Confidentiality notice. This message, including any attachments, may contain confidentiality. Oh. Every company seems very quick to throw Nyko under the bus. It's very clear that Nyko had the worst dock with the worst failure rate. However, it's a proven fact that the Switch uses its own proprietary power delivery method, not the USB PD standard, or at least it doesn't abide by those rules. Therefore, any company that is making a dock specifically for the Switch is either using the standard PD protocol or making up their own power delivery protocol because nobody knows what the Switch is actually doing. My official conclusion and final take on this is that it is unsafe to use any third-party docks until Nintendo releases a firmware update to fix their power delivery protocol, which isn't gonna happen anytime soon. If you must use a third-party charger, I would say that you're most safe using it with the switch in portable mode when the device is asleep or off, avoid using aftermarket chargers for the switch dock and avoid aftermarket docks, period. Any company that is still selling them should pull them from the shelves immediately and any company that's still making them should stop making them entirely. This includes Best Buy, one of the few big stores and big manufacturers that's still selling their third-party dock. None of them understand what they're doing it's just a cash grab, and it puts your $300 device at risk and your priceless save data. So what do you guys think about third-party docks? Did I, just, did I just hear you throw yours in the trash? I hope I did. I wonder how Kickstarter handles refunds on campaigns in progress. Look, I don't wanna hurt these companies. With some of these companies, it's all that they do. It's people's livelihood. But I get asked all the time about Switch docks, and it's my job to be informed and it's my job to have your best interests as a consumer in mind. I needed to get to the bottom of it so I could have answers for people and people send me these docs and they want me to tell you about them. So here I am telling you about them. So save your money or dump it all into an official Nintendo Switch dock because that's expensive. There are ways to make your official Nintendo dock more portable. You just put it in a smaller casing. I'll leave links to that as well as all the other stuff that we talked about in the description below in case you wanna check that out. As for me, I'm always gonna use my official Nintendo Switch charger. As for the dock, when I'm away, I'll probably have a portable dock with me. Like if I'm only using it once on a trip, like, you know, you take you take the risk. But how much, how much was this, like 40 bucks? It's not worth the 40 bucks. I'm only doing it because I got it for free. 
Anyway, leave your thoughts on 30 party docs in the comments below. Add me on Twitter, all this other social media garbage. Have you ever had an issue with your doc? I wanna know about it. Also, you like this shirt? You can get it on uh, wolfdenapparel.com. Also, we finally have double XLs. Not in this shirt though, in the other shirt. The regular t-shirt, we got double XLs finally. So if you're a big old guy, get, get, get a big old shirt for yourself. Anyway, we got new videos and live streams all the time. Our schedule is in a pinned tweet over on our Twitter. Wolfden Live every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on this YouTube channel. And Twitch streams every Tuesday and Thursday night. Usually Pokemon. Maybe I should do Mario Maker again. Anyway, the most important thing that you could do is subscribe and share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe has one of these third-party docs or wants to get one. Thank you very much. You have yourself a very good day.